What is going on YouTube world? I'm your brother Reza and this is KRT Life. KRT Life with the Y. Like, subscribe, comment and all that. And in today's vlog, I am talking about my Arc'teryx Beta AR System Incorporated. But not so much this. I'm talking about my favorite alternatives to this system that you can wear in the urban environment and not feel so tactical. Coming up next. Today's video is all about my favorite alternatives to my super awesome Arc'teryx Beta AR system and all the other parts that go with it. Three part system, layer it all up, you're mega warm, you stay dry, you're comfortable, but there are downsides to Gore-Tex and this Arc'teryx kit that I just don't find so comfortable in the city. For instance, the sound is very loud, it's very crinkly feeling. And it's like when you're hiking, it's not that much of a problem or if you're snowboarding, but if you're in the city doing the city thing, going to class or going to work or going to a wedding, doing more civil things, it's just not the most, I guess, aesthetically pleasing or I guess ideal solution for average city life. So in today's video, I'm going to share with y'all my favorite alternatives to this system. And I'm gonna start from the cheapest one that I have all the way up to the most ridiculously expensive piece that I have for Ar Arc'teryx Alternative, which is already crazy expensive. So let's get started. All right, so number one is a really hard thing for me to quantify right here. This, as I discovered later in my time with this garment, is some sort of jacket liner. Now, I don't know where it came from. I don't know what company makes this thing. I literally found this on the street going to lunch one day at my old office. I saw it laying on the ground. And I was like, well, that looks like a pretty nice looking piece of clothing. So I picked it up. <laughs> I took it inside my office. No kidding. I tried it on and I fell in love with this garment. I fell in love with it so much. I wore it almost every single day last winter. And as I wore it, I mean, the quality of this thing isn't great. I mean, I found it in the street. You can see that the insulation has started popping out on this thing and it's just not in the greatest of shape anymore as when I found it laying on the ground. But it was free 99 so I rocked it into the ground and I really like this thing a lot and I still like it which is why I haven't gotten rid of it. So this was the first garment that I got that made me realize there was a massive hole in my wardrobe that needed to be filled because it was making it unconsciously very difficult for me to get dressed in a hurry. And as you can see, I typically wear all black. This is my normal winter kit. It is a uh, long sleeve wool shirt. This is the one from Theory that I reviewed a couple of videos ago. It is awesome. This is what I go, on, go to every day. And then I just layer upon this. So typically I would put something like this on and then this and then maybe some other type of shell equivalent. So let's go ahead and get into the rest of them that are, I guess, the more appropriate uh, garments that I want to talk about in this video because this one, I mean, I, I couldn't even tell you where to find this thing because I don't even know anything about it other than just, I guess, look on the ground in your random city and hopefully you might find one. I don't know. But moving on to the next garment that I got because of this garment right here. So I went and did some research and I found a few different companies and um, some things that I liked. And one of the first thing that first options that I found that I liked for a really good shell equivalent to my Arc'teryx was this right here. This is called the Longer Jacket by a company called Reigns. It is 140 US dollars. It is made out of a polyester material with a polyurethane coating on it. Uh, it's waterproof, windproof. It's super extra lightweight. The garment is designed to have uh, engineered ventilation uh, designed into the garment because it is not a breathable material. It is very, it is waterproof, therefore not breathable. Snap closures, uh, drawstrings around the hood, side yokes, vents, uh, eyelets at the armholes for extra venting, ultrasonically welded seams, a lot of really cool features in this garment. And I've been wearing this thing since, uh, it's been about a couple of months now since I got this thing. And so far I am very, very impressed with it. The engineered ven ventilation on this garment absolutely works. Um, it has kept me 100% dry because it's not breathable at all. The ventilation works really good, especially when you're wearing like a wool, like long sleeve shirt, like I always wear. It has this matte finish, which I absolutely love. And it goes with the rest of my wardrobe very easy. And aesthetically, I find it very nice. Uh, it's very long. Now there are three different lengths or four different lengths. Like this is the longest one. And when I wear it, it goes almost all the way down to the top of my boots, which is great when it's actually raining. 
But the trade-off is that you look kind of ex murder ish as my wife says. You can get the mid-length or you can get the short one or you can get a really short one, which I think they look a little bit better aesthetically. But if I'm wearing something this light, I kind of want it to function because it's not, it doesn't have any thermal qualities to it or anything like that. It's not going to keep you warm. Really, the only purpose of this thing is to keep you dry in a downpour, which it does exceptionally well. So why not let it be the longest possible? And it looked aesthetically pleasing to some degree, although you will look like an ex-murderer. Outside of looking like an ex-murderer, I really do like this garment a lot. It is pretty quiet, much more quiet than the uh, Arc'teryx Gore-Tex system. And it is extremely lightweight and very comfortable. It doesn't have that rigid paper bag feeling that you get with the heavier layer Gore-Tex garments. But I find it very comfortable to wear. And like I said, with wool under it, it is perfect. Last night I wore it. It was 30 something degrees outside, pouring down rain. I had wool under it and I was standing outside for like 15, 20 minutes and this thing was perfectly fine. So in the urban environment, going from your parking lot or going to from a, your car, a parking lot to a business or a storefront or a, you know, going to the movies or getting off the train or the bus. I think this is a great alternative for the city, especially if you layer it properly. This can be your go to uh, city shell and it comes at a fraction of the cost that a Gore-Tex garment or any Gore-Tex equivalent gar garment, that garment would cost you. So let's move on to the next one because this one is awesome. The company is called Reigns, $140. You get the point. I really like this a lot. All right, and moving right along to the next garment that we have. Now this isn't so much as a shell or a jacket as if this is, as this is a shirt slash jacket I, they call these things sh jorts in all kind of weird names this is called the duckworth men's snow crest shirt it is a hundred percent made in the united states from beginning to end the grass that is grown to the sheep that eat them to the everything in this uh production line of this garment is done in the United States, which is extremely rare these days. But this is 100% wool. It is 710 GSM and it is a very heavy and robust um, material. As y'all know, wool takes uh, color and dye really, really well. So this thing looks very, very jet black. All right, y'all, my son is really, really mad because he just had to come in from outside. So he's really, really pissed off. But, um, what was I saying? Oh, but because it is wool, it takes color really, really well, and it is very, very dark jet black, which is one of the features that I love about this thing the most. Now, when I originally got this piece right here, I wasn't super duper impressed with it upon initial, like, initially looking at it, but I decided to go ahead and take it out for wear, and I wore it to, I can't remember, I wore it to some event that we went to, and just in that one wear, I went from Eh, about it to like wow this is like probably gonna end up being my favorite shirt and it has since become my favorite shirt jacket whatever you want to call this thing because I literally wear this thing every single day I put on a shirt like this this and then if it's colder then I put something on top of this like I love this shirt jacket and I cannot get enough of it and the quality is amazing I've, I've worn it consecutively for probably 20 days now and as you can see, not much dirt, debris, or lint, or hairs have stuck to it. It's not wrinkled or looking crazy. And I have shown this thing no mercy. I wear it to work every single day. So this shirt is very water resistant and very snow resistant and wind resistant as well. It's not proof anything, but if you're in a sudden downpour or a hard blowing wind or a snowstorm or something like that, not snowstorm, but snow flurries, and you're walking from point A to point B, you should be pretty good with this right here. And it's a great garment. The reviews are outstanding if you go on the Duckworth website and check it out. So I can't recommend this enough. I fell in love with this shirt jacket and it's my favorite. So yeah, I love this. All right, so we're gonna move on to the next garment, the next and final garment. Now this one right here, like I said, oops. This one right here, like I said, is $330. The other one was $140, but last but not least is the most expensive garment in this entire list. And I'm almost embarrassed to say how much I paid for this thing. All right, we have arrived at the end of the video and this is the most expensive garment of them all. This one is the Burberry Candom Heritage Car Coat. 
It comes in at a whopping $2,000 before taxes. It's available in a bunch of different sizes, a few different lengths, and a few different colors. So a lot of combinations going on there. You can get it in black, navy, uh, honey. You can get it in. You can get it in short, long, and mid length. I have mid length, and it goes from size 42 to size 60 uh, UK sizing. Now. Why did I get this jacket? I got this jacket because I needed something that was pretty wind resistant, pretty uh, water resistant, element resistant, but still, um, I guess, basic enough to be worn with a suit and to, war to be worn in casual slash business attire environments. And this was literally the perfect fit for that. I have dressed this, um, this coat up. I have dressed it down. I've worn it with Timberlands. I've worn it with combat boots. I can wear it with sneakers. I've worn it with Jordans. But you can always also wear it with Chelsea boots. You can wear it with dress shoes. It is probably the most versatile jacket I have ever owned and didn't even know that I really even need it until I found that other jacket in the street. This has bridged the gap between my wardrobe uh, between summer and winter. And now it, it has literally made it so easy for me to get dressed in the morning because I have to get up and go to work super early in the morning. I wake up at 5 a.m. ish to get ready for work. And um, yeah, around that time, the last thing I'm thinking about is, oh man, I need to throw together the best fit for the day. I just need to get ready in a hurry. And this allows me to do that and look good while doing that. Um, now, I love the cut, I love the fit, I love the finished product and the attention to details. Um, there are a few things about this that I don't really like so much that I feel like could have been a little bit better. And had I done more research, I probably would have tried other options. Uh, one of the things that I don't really like care for too much about this jacket is that it's not as water resistant as I would like it to be. It is water resistant to some degree because it's made out of gabardine, which is, uh, well, you can go and you can do a whole, your own deep dive into what gabardine is, but essentially it's a material that's woven together so tight that it's very water and wind resistant, but it's not as water and wind resistant as I would like it to be, but it does pretty good. This gabardine material also isn't super stain resistant. Like it, does pretty good and it's easy to wipe off if it does get a little scuff here or there but it does pick up and show scuffs pretty easy versus uh for instance my duckworth shirt that thing just always looks clean it's the miracle of wool who would have guessed um the other thing about this gabardine material is that it does kind of also show wrinkles if i like just throw this thing in the back of my truck or something like that and come back and put it on it takes a while for those wrinkles to fall out versus the duckworth wool like it just never looks wrinkled. It always just looks perfect. Um, what else do I not necessarily like about this thing? Um, I went with the oversized fit, which I do like when I put like a suit on and then throw this on top of a suit, which I have done several times already. Um, and I can throw it on top of hoodies and stuff like that. I do kind of wish I would have sized down to a size 42. I went with the size 44. I feel like a size 42 would have been a little bit more form fitting, but maybe I would have lost some of that versatility. I don't really know, but um, it is very warm though. It is very warm, it covers me very nice. It fits almost exactly perfect. It's super comfortable, especially with these raglan sleeves. And um, overall, I would say it's a great jacket. I mean, it's crazy expensive, but it is a really, really good jacket. And I even compared this to a, a Burberry jacket from the 80s. And that Burberry jacket from the 80s, I mean, it was weathered, but it was still in very good shape. And um, yeah, they, they really haven't changed as much as you would think over so many years. So they make really good garments that really do last the test of time. And when you do get tired or bored with the garment, you can sell it and still get a lot of your money back. So I think they are a worthwhile investment, but still really, really, really expensive. And I feel like there are other options out there. One last thing about this jacket that um, I kind of, eh, I'm on the fence about is this tartan design on the inside this is you know burberry's signature design a lot of people love it i'm kind of indifferent about it i wouldn't have minded being all the way black in th in, uh, all the way black inside and out but i mean you know it is the look that a lot of people pay for and a lot of people seem to like me i'm just indifferent about it uh it also has that same pattern under the collar which when you pop your collar if it's really windy um you know people can see that you're wearing a burberry coat which is neither here or there for me but I do like the jacket. I do like the way it fits. I like the, the pocket, um, the, the pockets on the front of the jacket. And I, I really like the way it feels and everything and the material outside of those few really small things that I mentioned. Um, now, had I known a little bit more and done a little bit more research, there is a jacket or a company that I did want to try more so 
uh, after I uh, discovered this. And that jacket is, where is it? All right, so if you're on the market for a Burberry jacket similar to the one I have, before you buy that Burberry, you might want to take a, company, take a look at a company called Norwegian Rain. They have some amazing looking Scandinavian like dressy rain jackets and rain coats and like trenches and stuff like that that are just amazing. Like had I stumbled upon Nor Norwegian rain initially, I would have gone that route instead of going Burberry personally. And their jackets are a lot cheaper. Not a lot, lot cheaper. They're still expensive, but they're not $2,000. Like I'm looking at their prices right now. They're all right at about... $1,500 to $700, so about half the price of a Burberry, and they have very, very unique, really cool designs. <coughs> Excuse me. Some of them are really classic. Some of them are very, very edgy. Uh, I don't know if this is Art Nouveau or if this is, I don't know what you would call this design, but co uh, contemporary? I don't know, but they look really, really cool, and I would love to try out their products and uh, yeah, maybe one day I'll uh, find myself in like, you know, one of those Scandinavian countries and I'll go into one of these stores and be able to try them on. And that's the one thing that was kind of like, eh, well, maybe this I'm glad it didn't work out this way because the whole sizing and fitting, like the, all the garments that I just discussed with you all fit me perfectly. And that's because I was able to go in the store and try them on. Well, except for the Duckworth. Didn't get to go in the store and try. Well, actually, no, I'm lying. I didn't try on the Duckworth or the Reigns. They just fit perfect. So maybe the Norwegian Rain would have just fit perfect. I don't know. I don't even know what I'm talking about right now. But the garments that I went over, the Reigns jacket, the Duckworth jacket, this Burberry jacket, I love these garments a lot. They have like made my life significantly easier and getting dressed way easier. And I can't believe all I went all these years without having these basic garments in my life and in my wardrobe. So I'm your brother Reza. This is KRT Life, KRT Life with the Y. Like, subscribe, comment, and all that. I uh, hope you take something from this video. And if you try any of these products, um, I don't think you'll be dis disappointed. Well, maybe with the Burberry one because it's stupid expensive. But the rest of them, they're so cheap. I don't think you'll, I think you'll love them. So, yep, I hope you like it. Uh, I hope you like this video. I hope it helps you out. And I'll see you all in the next vlog coming up about I don't know what. We'll see you there. Peace. Later. Care to life.